Hi, and welcome to this session about automotive grade Linux on Raspberry Pi. My name is Leon Navi, and I'm a senior software engineer at Consulco Group. It is a pleasure to be presenting here at Embedded Linux Conference. Before we start, a huge thanks to the whole team at Linux Foundation for switching to a virtual event on a such a short notice. Fingers crossed that the future ahead of us is better and soon we'll be uh, able to gather together on physical events. Kosuku Group, the company that I work for, is a service company specialized in embedded Linux and open source software. My colleagues and I have experience in hardware and software build, design, development and training services. We have upstream contributions to various popular open source projects, among which are the Yocto project, Open Embedded, the Linux kernel itself, uh, U-Boot, and of course, Automotive Grade Linux. The company is based in uh, California. However, we have engineering presence worldwide, and I am living in Povdiv, Bulgaria, in Europe. The agenda for the talk today includes a brief introduction to Automotive Grade Linux, followed by a few words about Raspberry Pi and the history, how AGL was ported uh, to AGL, a process that I was involved from day one. Uh, in this talk, you'll learn how to build an image, uh, AGL image for Raspberry Pi, how to boot it on Raspberry Pi 3 or 4. You will understand how it works. Uh, and finally, we'll do some conclusions and there will be time for Q&A session. So, Automotive Grade Linux is a project of the Linux Foundation. It is an open source GNU Linux automotive distribution with in-vehicle infotainment. Uh, it's very important to know that uh, automotive grade Linux is based on another project of the Linux Foundation, the Yocto project, and the Open Embedded Build Framework. Automotive grade Linux uh, was founded several years ago and the first code delivery was in 2014. I personally started contributing to this project back in 2015, which makes five years uh, for, for me. I'll, I'll be celebrating five years of contributions to AGL this year. AGL has a lot of members. These uh, are companies from the automotive industry, well-known uh, names in the industry. More and more companies are joining AGL over the time. And by the way, AGL is already available uh, on um, vehicles on the road, for example, Toyota Camry, is powered by AGL. This is a um, high-level picture of the core components of AGL. Uh, so in general, AGL as a Linux uh, distribution is not so different from the dual Linux distributions that we are running on our personal computers as desktops. However, there are certain components that are very specific for the automotive uh, industry and uh, that makes AGL special. So let's have a look at these core components. Of course, this is a very small portion of the older components that the uh, Linux distribution has. However, I think these are some of the most important parts. Um, so AGL works on uh, various uh, different hardware platforms. Uh, in the next slides, I'll show you the list of um, uh, boards on which you can run AGL. Uh, so for each board, uh, there is a specific board support package, which includes a, a Linux kernel version if, if the board does not support uh, running uh, mainline Linux kernel, uh, and the bootloader, eventually some um, binary blobs for uh, running the graphical user stack. Um, AGL is powered uh, with uh, systemd. Uh, there is this new uh, audio framework, Pipewire, uh, AGL started with AUS and PUS Audio. After that, there was uh, another audio framework called 4A Audio. And uh, for the past uh, about a year, or a bit more than a year, uh, AGL is using Pipewire, this uh, really exciting project covering some very specific uh, audio use cases, especially for the automotive industry with uh, 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 with Bluetooth con uh, connected devices. There, there are software over the air updates and other components which is specific for embedded devices and um, especially for the automotive industry. AGL relies on uh, OS3, or not also known uh, in modern days as LibOS3 and Actualizer 
to perform uh, Git-like software um, updates over the air. Uh, this means that you are downloading only uh, the binary delta, which is smaller compared to doing AB updates. And this is convenient because the vehicle might be in a region with uh, uh, not uh, so good internet connectivity and it might be hard to download a huge uh, image if you're doing AB updates. In this, uh, in this particular case, uh, Oystree and Actualizer are providing a better solution. Uh, another specific thing about AGL is the graphical user stack, which is based on Wayland uh, with Western as a compositor. And something new that is going on right now, uh, AGL is switching from the IVI shell uh, for Western to AGL uh, shell desktop. Uh, this is uh, something that is uh, in development. I'm really excited about it. Uh, you can uh, check some of the newer images of AGL and see how this is going on. On the top of AGL, you find a human interface, human to machine interface applications. Uh, the default applications are uh, written in Qt and QML. These are just demo applications. Of course, um, companies manufacturing vehicles for the market are replacing these uh, applications with specific application branded for uh, for their vehicle. Alternatively, you can also use HTML5 or uh, integrate a completely different uh, platform for um, development of um, graphical user interfaces. Also, um, uh, we have a number of uh, supported, um, supported technologies such as GStreamer for video streaming. Uh, before we move on, uh, just to mention that uh, another very specific thing about automotive grade Linux is the security model. Uh, SMAC has to be enabled in the Linux kernel and uh, AGL uses the so-called application framework. Uh, although the name um, may sound as uh, um, something else, the application framework is actually part of the security mechanism with Synagora. It provides permissions how different parts of the system can access can be accessed by applications and software components. Uh, as I said, uh, automotive grade Linux is based on the Yocto project and open embedded. Therefore, you can see a lot of layers uh, in AGL. Uh, AGL is based on Pocky. Pocky is the reference distribution provided by the Yocto project. Uh, there are a number of um, AGL specific layers uh, you see that they're starting with prefix meta AGL. Also, there are a lot of um, board support package layers. Um, most importantly for this talk, which is for uh, which is focused on Raspberry Pi, is meta Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is the layer that provides support uh, for um, all Raspberry Pi models and versions. However, in AGL, uh, in the latest AGL releases, we support only Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. Um, other layers that uh, worth mentioning, of course, are uh, Meta Open Embedded, which uh, provide uh, a number of sub layers, uh, such as uh, Meta OE, Meta Python, and so on. If you are building a distribution, uh, another distribution with the Yocto project and uh, uh, Open Embedded, most probably you end up uh, using Meta Open Embedded too. It's uh, probably the most popular uh, collection of recipes in the Yocto and Open Embedded world. Uh, Metadata, uh, something that I've mentioned before, uh, the, is, it is required for the software over uh, the air updates with LibOystry and Actualizer. Uh, and MetaQt5 is required for uh, compiling and running uh, the default uh, demo uh, graphical user interface. Let's have a look at the releases of AGL. Uh, AGL releases twice per year. Every six months, uh, there is a new stable release of AGL. Uh, AGL releases are uh, named on, uh, on uh, fishes. So the latest stable release as of today is uh, Itchy Icefish. However, uh, in just in a few days, uh, another uh, release candidate and a stable release hopefully after that will be released. This is gonna be uh, jumping jellyfish, it's part of uh, the development process uh, right now. Uh, here you can see a screenshot which is taken from the AGL wiki with the AGL schedule for 
uh, this year and so far uh, the project is uh, going uh, on schedule so in July we can expect the, the next uh, uh, release candidate AGO runs on uh, several uh, hardware devices uh, the Tire 1 devices, the devices that has um, best support for AGO are Renesas Aircar Starter Kit Generation 3 boards most of Intel's 64-bit uh, hardware platforms, including Mino board, Max, and Turbo, these are uh, open-source hardware uh, development boards with Intel CPU. You can also run uh, AGL in emulator. There are two options for this, uh, Quemo or VirtualBox. It's, it, it's up to you to decide. Raspberry Pi is part of the community-supported boards. Uh, both Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 are supported by the latest versions of AGL. Uh, there, there are a bunch of other devices that are supported by AGL, including an older versions of Raspberry Pi. Um, Raspberry Pi 2 uh, was supported by um, the, the first, uh, actually was the first uh, Raspberry Pi model supported by AGL. However, due to the um, limited hardware capabilities uh, of it in the later uh, AGL uh, uh, releases, we stopped supporting Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, visit uh, this link in the wiki uh, to learn more about the supported devices and the particular releases in AGO in which they are supported. A few words about Raspberry Pi. I'm personally attached to Raspberry Pi. <laughs> I, I like this platform a lot. Uh, Raspberry Pi are a series of small single board computers uh, with the size of a credit card or even smaller, uh, considering Raspberry Pi Zero, which actually is uh, out of the scope of this talk because uh, AGL doesn't run Raspberry Pi Zero. However, uh, still, uh, Raspberry Pi is a single board computer developed by the Raspberry Pi Foundation, which is uh, based in Cambridge in the United Kingdom. Uh, all models of Raspberry Pi feature a Broadcom system on a chip and a, uh, an ARM CPU. Raspberry Pi has been designed primarily to promote teaching of basic computer science However, over the time, it became extremely popular platform in the maker community for hobby projects and a lot of demonstrations. And actually, in AGL, Raspberry Pi is uh, commonly used for demonstrations. Uh, Raspberry Pi nowadays is a commodity. It's easy to buy. It. It's all around the world. Uh, pretty much everyone has a Raspberry Pi, so it's easy to just grab it. Um, uh, build an image, flash it on a micro SD card, and build it on uh, Raspberry Pi. And by the way, the Raspberry Pi Foundation is uh, providing um, a desktop distribution, which I'm sure everyone here knows, Raspbian. Uh, however, it's a very different distribution compared to AGL, and um, in the next slides you see the major differences. A few uh, milestones about Raspberry Pi, important dates. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Foundation was uh, uh, established more than a decade ago. The first Raspberry Pi uh, was released in 2012. Um, Raspberry Pi then uh, transformed uh, with a lot of hardware differences in 2014. They extended the header from 26 pins to 40 pins and introduced uh, the new form factor which they keep for several versions now. The first uh, board with this form factor was Raspberry Pi B Plus. Uh, after that, Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 4, all they have the same form factor. Um, important dates uh, from these milestones uh, related to AGL is the release of Raspberry Pi 3 and 4, because as of the moment, the master branch of AGL supports these um, two uh, hardware versions of Raspberry Pi. Uh, so, uh, in terms of AGL, the important dates start actually in 2015 uh, when uh, Mauro Chena, who at that time was working for Samsung Open Source Group, ported Tizen based on Yocto and Open Embedded to Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, the difficult part there was to get Wayland and Weston uh, properly working on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, with ARM devices, uh, getting uh, Wayland and Weston properly working is always uh, one of the huge challenges even uh, today, five years later. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the first code release of AGL from 2014 was based on Tizen, the IVI profile of Tizen. 
So um, there are uh, some uh, similarities between Tizen and AGL. Of course, over the time, the two projects um, uh, are uh, moving on in different directions. So nowadays, there are quite a lot of differences as well. Uh, but um, in 2015, what Maurer did was uh, very useful because after that, uh, his work was adopted first by the Geneva Development Platform. And uh, shortly after that, I was the one who uh, used the knowledge uh, from Geneva Development Platform and Python, which are both open source projects, and ported uh, AGL to Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, over the time, we also support uh, Raspberry Pi 3, which uh, was uh, the support uh, in Asia was uh, added in 2016 with uh, pretty much all, uh, the same time with the release of uh, the new Raspberry Pi uh, version. And last year we added support for Raspberry Pi 4, uh, which was uh, quite an exciting process. Uh, there, there were some challenges over it, uh, which we'll mention at the end of this presentation. But today we have both Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 uh, working in the master of AGL as well as in the latest stable release. Uh, however, keep in mind that um, Raspberry Pi 3 uh, is with uh, less RAM and that's uh, kind of a problem for AGL. Uh, so I expect that uh, in near future, the support for Raspberry Pi 3 will be dropped and AGL will focus on supporting Raspberry Pi 4 and eventually uh, new, new Raspberry Pi versions of the Raspberry Foundation hopefully will release on the market. Let's have a look at how to build an image for uh, Raspberry Pi from scratch. And before we go into the details, uh, which you already seen um, in this uh, slide, I would like to highlight that it is also possible to directly download a pre-built AGO image for Raspberry Pi 3 on 4 and to save all these steps uh, for building an image from scratch. However, the point of this presentation is that this presentation is for uh, beginners, but people that are interested in developing for AGO, using AGO for prototyping. And in this case, you should be able to customize AGO, which means that you need to build it, to modify the source code, to build it again, to deploy it on the board, and so on. Uh, so AGO is using the Google Repo tool uh, to uh, simplify the process for downloading all the uh, metadata for building an image. So uh, first of all, you need to prepare the repo tool. This is a one-time operation. After that, you need to make an appropriate directory and to initialize uh, a repo in it. As you can see here, I'm directly uh, initializing a repo um, for the master branch of AGL. This is the latest and greatest. However, uh, this means that this is not the stable version. This is the version that is being in development. Uh, if you want to use something that's stable and properly tested, I highly recommend you, instead of using the master branch, uh, to use um, the appropriate uh, stable version as of the time when you are doing it. Uh, repo sync command actually downloads uh, the source code based on the repo that we have initialized on the previous command. Once uh, we have downloaded the metadata, then there is this AGL script which initializes the build environment. Um, so in this AGL setup script, it's a bash script, we need to uh, set a machine. In our case, we're gonna build it for Raspberry Pi 4 and a list of AGL features. Uh, this is gonna be a very basic image uh, with not too many features. Uh, I'm just... Um, um, I'm just uh, setting up a build environment with AGL demo and AGL application framework smart features. However, uh, depending on the use case that you're gonna use your Raspberry Pi and AGL, uh, you should um, decide uh, whether you need to enable more features. And then you need to execute BitBake. BitBake uh, is coming uh, from the Yoki project in Open Embedded. People with experience uh, with the Yoki project are already familiar with BitBake. So the name of the most common targeted image in the AGL world is AGL Demo Platform. So uh, the build from scratch uh, takes a significant amount of time because AGL has a lot of components. Uh, the time uh, depends on your internet connection speed because uh, 
in the previous step, we just downloaded the source code of the metadata, uh, which BitBake uses to start building each package, each recipe. Uh, now we are going through the download task for each of these uh, recipes, uh, and um, this will, again, take some time to download, depending on your internet connection speed. And after that, it also depends on the hardware capabilities of your build machine. Something super important to note, uh, the, the whole procedure that you see here, the idea is that you should execute this on, on, a, on a machine with x86-64 CPU from Intel or IMD with a Linux distribution that is compatible to the Dunfeld uh, release of AGL. For example, I'm a, I'm an Ubuntu user, I'm uh, running Ubuntu both on my laptop and my build machines. Uh, so I have built this image on Ubuntu 18.4. It, uh, it's also possible to, to build it on other new Linux distributions. Um, have a, have a, look, a look at the appropriate um, uh, Yocto Mega Manual for release Dunfeld as of the moment or for newer releases if you are watching this presentation uh, uh, later on uh, to figure out which are the supported distributions. if the distribution that you are running on your build machine is different, please consider um, please consider uh, building it in a container. Uh, so uh, the supported Raspberry Pi models which you can set in the AGO um, uh, uh, script that in initializes the build environment are Raspberry Pi 3 and 4. Uh, this is a um, short list of the uh, some of the AGO features that you may consider for example, the AGO Netboot for, network, uh, uh, for boot over the network or AGO Soda, which enables the software over the air upgrades. Uh, run source meta AGO slash script slash AGO setup dot sh uh, help to show the, the list of all features supported. Uh, once the image is ready, it will end up in the temporary uh, deploy uh, directory for the image that you've selected. For Raspberry Pi 4, we are building a 64-bit image of AGL. Uh, the output file is uh, weak, uh, and you need to extract it and flush it on a micro SD card. The easiest way to do it is using DD. However, just be careful to find the appropriate SD card device, <laughs> otherwise uh, you risk to wipe out uh, your, uh, your drive. Um, for beginners, it's also possible, instead of using a DD, to use uh, software uh, with graphical user interface such as Balena Etcher or the recently re released by Raspberry Pi Foundation, Raspberry Pi Imager. Once you're ready with the flashing procedure, uh, plug the micro SD card in the Raspberry Pi and turn it on uh, to turn on the Raspberry Pi. All you need is to plug an appropriate um, USB cable for Raspberry Pi 4. This has to be a USB-C cable. The first boot of uh, AGO text takes a little bit um, more time because it's doing some um, one-off uh, preparations. Uh, each next boot is uh, significantly faster. Uh, these are the common AGO images. We we built AGO demo platform, but there are also other images such as uh, uh, AGO image IVI, which is a very base image for IVI targets, or AGO image minimal, which is a minimal file system with APIs without graphical interface. There is also an AGO image that just includes uh, Wayland and Western. Uh, explore these images if you need to customize them. However, the most common target, especially if you are a beginner, is AGO demo platform. Um, this is an um, output from the serial console. So basically, you can connect your computer to the Raspberry Pi using uh, um, the UART pins on the 40-pin uh, header of the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and uh, using a USB to UART cable, you can monitor the serial output as the Raspberry Pi boots. Uh, this is, um, um, uh, I've copied a uh, uh, sample how our mode of grade Linux has uh, been booted on my Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, the, the default uh, login is root, and this is the Linux kernel version that, uh, that I have printed it out. The serial both rate, if you're doing something like this, uh, is. Uh, uh, 115-200. Uh, a few screenshots of uh, Raspberry Pi on AGO, uh, so of AGO on Raspberry Pi 4. These are three screenshots. Uh, the first screenshot 
is the, the home screen uh, with all the installed applications. As I told you, the first boot takes a little bit more time because all these applications are uh, automatically installed in first boot. Each next boot is significantly faster. Um, these are, of course, just demo, demo applications uh, just to, to prove that the, the platform works and to allow you to make more uh, complex demonstrations. Uh, the second screenshot is from the HVAC uh, application and the third one is from the settings and more specifically from the about setting, uh, about section of the settings. Uh, here is a uh, system D log of Weston. Uh, as I told you, uh, this is something very specific for AGL. Uh, AGL relies instead of X11 on Wayland and Weston is a reference compositor uh, for uh, Wayland. Uh, Wayland has actually over over the time has been adopted not only by the automotive industry but also uh, you can find it in modern smart TVs manufactured by LG and Samsung respectively with WebOS and Tizen as, as well as even in uh, smart watches with Tizen. Um, supported Raspberry Pi peripherals in AGL these are peripherals that we try to um, we try to uh, test. Uh, AGMI monitors uh, of course, this is the most common setup to plug an HDMI cable in your Raspberry Pi. For Raspberry Pi 4, it's going to be the, uh, the first HDMI uh, connect connector. Uh, of course, the Raspberry Pi official 7-inch touch screen display, which, is, which has a separate connector on the Raspberry Pi board, is also supported. Um, starting with Raspberry Pi 3, the platform uh, has a built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth capabilities. Uh, they are supported and they work, however, they're not super reliable. In AGO Jira, you can see some uh, people complaining about the real, uh, reliability of the Wi-Fi. So if you are experiencing something like this uh, with the Wi-Fi, it is highly recommended uh, to use a USB dongle as an external hardware and to plug it into a Raspberry Pi for more stable Wi-Fi connection. Uh, also, you can attach various third-party add-on boards and uh, heads. Heads uh, is um, it's a hardware standard uh, introduced by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. It means hardware attached on top, and these are devices that you plug on the 40-pin header of the Raspberry Pi, and uh, has an EEPROM with device tree binary overlay connected to pins uh, 27 and 28 of the Raspberry Pi header, where is the secondary I2C. Okay, so we've built an image, the image boots, we've seen all this, but how does it really work? So, first of all, uh, the core component uh, for building um, AGL is the Yocto project. Uh, the Yocto project is an open source collaborative project of the Linux Foundation for creating custom Linux based systems for embedded devices using the open embedded build system. Uh, open embedded build system provides BitBake which you have already seen in the previous slides how to use to, uh, to kick off uh, a build of an image and open embedded core. Pocky is the name of the reference distribution provided by the Yocto project. It is used by uh, automotive grade Linux. Uh, in one of the previous slides, you saw it among the list of Yocto open embedded layers. Uh, so Pocky provides, um, is provided as metadata. There are no binary files there. The idea is to bootstrap your own distribution for embedded devices and uh, to save you some time because Pocky is on its own. It's a very minimal Linux distribution that you can boot. The Yocto project has the annual release cycle twice per year. There is a new release of the Yocto project. Uh, this uh, uh, happens in the spring and in the autumn. Uh, so here is some... Um, here is uh, the current uh, uh, releases of the Yocto project. As of the moment, uh, since April, uh, the stable uh, release of uh, the Yocto project is called Dunfo. This is version 3.1. This is a long-term stable. The names of the previous releases were uh, Zeros, Warrior, Tut, Sumo, Rocco, and so on. The next release is uh, hopefully scheduled for October this year. AGL Master, as of the moment, is based on Dunfo. Um, here is a code snippet taken from the default XML. This is the repo manifest uh, that uh, we, uh, we are actually using for, for the build that we did on the previous steps because when we did this repo init command, 
what it actually did was to download this default XML manifest and using it to do the repo sync. Uh, so here you see uh, the exact revisions from the build that we did, or at least I did at the time when I when I did it, and the upstream is referencing to the latest stable release of the Yocto protocol called Dunfeld. Uh, AGO also provides uh, various other releases, so if you want to use a stable release for AGL instead of master, you can explore the AGL slash AGL repo and uh, figure out the exact release that you need for the bot that you're targeting. This is very specific depending on um, on the, the project you are working on. If you if you don't know how to start, what I would recommend you is just to take the latest stable release. Uh, a few words about Meta Raspberry Pi. We've already mentioned it on a couple of occasions. This is a general Yocto Open Embedded Board Support Package Layer for uh, all models and versions of Raspberry Pi. It depends on uh, layers uh, from Meta Open Embedded. These are Meta OE, Meta Multimedia, Meta Networking, Meta Python. It provides uh, specific variables as knobs to enable disable hardware specific features. Uh, in AGL, we have the UART enabled as well as UBoot. Uh, another very important thing is the variable that say, uh, uh, sets the type of uh, KMS that should be used in um, in AGL to support Wayland and Western and the uh, up the demo applications that you've seen on the screenshots on both the HDMI monitor and the official Raspberry Pi 7-inch touchscreen display. Uh, last autumn in October and November um, we had some difficulties to figure out why the um, the official Raspberry Pi 7-inch uh, touchscreen display isn't properly working in AGL uh, on on certain uh, Raspberry Pi models, and it appears uh, that at that time uh, we were we were using uh, KMS instead of uh, firmware KMS. So the solution was to switch this variable to the value that you see here, which basically means using the firmware KMS. Uh, if you find a bug, bug and want to report it, if you want to fix it or add a new feature to Meta Raspberry Pi, uh, do it as a GitHub pull request. This is the link in GitHub where you can find it. The maintainer of Meta Raspberry Pi is Andre Gerzan. Um, there are more than 90 contributors, a very active community. Uh, Raspberry Pi, after all, is super popular, so there are a lot of people interested in looking after this, uh, this board support package. And I have to say that Andre is doing a great job, and this is one of, uh, actually this is my favorite more support package uh, layer for Yocto Project and Open Embedded. There is also a great documentation. It's available at the link here at uh, read the docs. Uh, Meta Raspberry Pi uh, in AGL is done uh, in the following way. So when you run the AGL setup script for Raspberry Pi, if you spe specify Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, as a targeted machine. It initializes the build environment by automatically populating conf slash local.conf and conf slash bblayers.conf. Uh, so Meta Raspberry Pi will go into the bblayers.conf file in order to uh, take advantage of all the things that it brings for supporting AGL. Um, so uh, furthermore, uh, there is a one um, sub-layer of Meta AGL called Meta AGL BSP. Uh, which contains um, hardware specific configurations. So AGL setup will take care of automatically loading it also in the BB layers. Uh, in uh, local.com file, if you have a look at it, for example, if you open it in, with Vim or Nano or whatever is your uh, favorite text editor, you'll notice that it will include um, AGL underscore uh, Raspberry Pi 3 or 4, depending on the machine that you've selected. Um, so these are again hardware specific configurations for running AGL on Raspberry Pi. Um, so what are these hardware specific configurations? Well, AGL on Raspberry Pi uses U-Boot as a bootloader, uh, not the default uh, bootloader provided by the Raspberry Pi Foundation. We are using U-Boot. Um, we're setting up the, uh, the GPU memory. We're enabling UART, which provides provide us the, the opportunity to uh, monitor the serial output while the board boots. Uh, also, uh, various uh, kernel modules as well as Wi-Fi and Bluetooth firmware are included in the AGL demo platform image that we uh, 
uh, we've learned how to build in uh, one of the previous slides. Um, a few words about the AGO software over the air updates. Uh, in order to enable them, uh, you have to uh, uh, explicitly um, type in the AGL sort of feature with, when you are running the AGL setup script. Uh, it will include a couple of uh, Yocto and Open Embedded layers. Uh, they're, uh, they're called Meta Updater and Meta Updater Raspberry Pi. As the name suggests, the second layer, Meta Updater Raspberry Pi, uh, contains some um, specific BBFN files uh, to run uh, OS3 and Actualizer um, and properly uh, make the partitions and everything uh, for booting on a Raspberry Pi. Uh, LibOS3 is a great project uh, that I really admire because it provides a Git-like model for committing and downloading um, updates. Um, initially, it was a technology that was developed for, um, for desktop distribution. Actually, GNOME Continuous is uh, using it for quality assurance. And uh, several years ago, maybe four or five years, um, it was ported um, to, to embedded devices. I was happy to be part of this process. Um, there, is a, there is a tool called Actualizer, um, which was developed by um, the German company uh, uh, Advanced Dynamatic Systems, which was, uh, which was acquired by uh, HERE, and uh, HERE is now developing it. Uh, which is another open source tool for automatic provisioning of bootable file system trees to a fleet of vehicles. So this is something specific for, uh, for the automotive industry. Um, so yeah, uh, you can use uh, LibOS3 and Actualizer either in AGL, the, using the AGL sort of feature, or if you prefer, you can even integrate them in, in a separate, your own uh, Yocto an open embedded based distribution, even if it's uh, it's not AGL. More details about how to use it are available both in the wiki um, uh, of AGL as well as uh, the documentation, the official documentation for Actualizer and uh, uh, provided by here. Uh, both links are available in the slides. Um, so now let's have a look. Uh, what development tools are used in AGL so that you can join the project and use them. Actually, all those uh, tools are quite popular in the industry and most, most probably you are already familiar with them, so it's gonna be an easy transition if you're new to the project. Um, as you have seen, uh, the source code in AGL is stored in various Git repositories and uh, the Google repo tool is used um, to easily, with just a few commands, uh, check out these repositories together and build an image. For code reviews, AGL is relying on Garrett. Uh, also, there, is, uh, there are GitHub repositories, on, but only for the documentation. Uh, here you can see both links to Garrett and uh, GitHub. If you find a bug and want to report it, go to Jira. This is the bug tracking system that AGL uses. Uh, there's also a great wiki, so if you find something specific, or if you are searching for some specific information, have a look at the wiki first. Um, and for the general documentation, the official documentation of automotive grade Linux is available at docs.automotivelinux.org. Um, AGL relies on Jenkins for continuous integrations, Lava and, for, uh, and Fuego for running tests. A few words about AGL Garrett. Um, this is a free and open source web-based team uh, called Collaboration Tool for code reviewers. It is specifically uh, useful uh, when you have large projects and uh, definitely AGO is a large project uh, with people working and uh, reviewing code that are people that are distributed around the world working in different time zones. AGO simplifies the code review process and it's a great tool uh, for this job. Um, you can um, use AGO Garrett, all you need to do is to create a free account at Identity Linux foundation.org to be able to log in to, to gary.automotive.org. Um, so the, the workflow for contributing to AGL is basically that you report an issue or a new feature in Jira. After that, you modify the source code. You include a reference uh, to the Jira issues in the git, git commit message that provides uh, the bug fix or the new feature. And um, you have to contribute it to 
the AGO Garrett workflow, uh, which is pretty standard for, for using Garrett. So basically the idea is that uh, you are, um, you are uh, cloning locally uh, the, the Git repository, you are modifying it. After that, you are pushing changes which are pending under review and a reviewer must vote. And uh, if, uh, if the change is approved by the community, if it has enough plus votes, the maintainer will submit it uh, to, to the AGL repository. Uh, here's an example. This is a screenshot um, taken from one commit that I did a few months ago. Uh, and it has been merged uh, in AGO Garrett. I've mentioned that back in the days, uh, last autumn, uh, we, we had a lot of problems um, supporting uh, both the HM, uh, HMI monitors and the seven uh, inch official Raspberry Pi touchscreen display. So the solution was to switch to firmware KMS. Uh, so here, uh, if you notice, there is this uh, bug AGO tag uh, and it contains a link uh, to the jury issue. This is spec 2465. So uh, this is very convenient because if you're reading the log several months later, as we do it here today, you can just click on, the, on this link and you see the whole, the whole uh, history with more details, uh, what has been done and why it has been uh, done. Um, I encourage you to join the AGL communication channels. AGL has some mailing lists. Um, you know, there is a weekly developer call each Tuesday where all developers gather to discuss uh, the, the progress of, uh, of the project. Uh, this uh, developer call takes about an hour or even less. And if you have a quick question, you can always join the automotive channel on Freenode. So uh, a few conclusions at the end of this presentation. As you have seen, Automotive Grade Linux is a collaborative open source project uh, that is bringing together automo uh, automotive makers, suppliers, uh, and technology components, as well as individuals. Uh, the idea is to acceler accelerate the development and adoption of fully open source software stack based on Linux. This is really important for the connected car. AGL is a Linux Foundation project. Uh, Raspberry Pi is just one of the supported platforms by AGL. Of course, uh, AGL uh, um, is uh, in general targeting to run uh, automotive grade hardware. Raspberry Pi is not made for uh, cars. However, uh, it's a very convenient platform for uh, getting started, for doing proof of concept demonstrations because Raspberry Pi is cheap and it's easy to get. No matter where you're living, uh, most probably there is a distributor near you, so you can easily buy a Raspberry Pi and get started. I hope this talk will encourage you to join the automotive grade Linux community, start contributing to the development, to the testing by reporting bugs on Jira, or to the documentation. Uh, AGO is participating in uh, uh, the Google Summer of Code uh, programs, uh, as well as uh, Summer of Documentation. Uh, the community manager, managers of uh, AGL uh, can sh uh, share more details about it. Uh, they're part of the Embedded Linux conference. Uh, have a look for Walt or Jan Simon uh, to chat uh, about the project if you are interested uh, and uh, want to learn more details uh, how to join our community. Thank you very much. Here are a few useful links and I'll be happy to hear uh, your questions. Thank you very much for, for your attention again. Hi, thank you very much for joining this session. Uh, there are a lot of useful commands and uh, questions, so uh, I'll start answering them. Uh, Randy from the Linux Foundation, who's looking after the infrastructure of AGL, has a very important command. He wrote that soon there will be GitHub repositories, not only for the documentation, but also for the source code. Ryan, thank you very much for this command. Um, 
Another question, uh, does this work for Raspberry Pi Zero? Uh, uh, sorry, Valentin, no, uh, AGL doesn't run on Raspberry Pi Zero W because Raspberry Pi Zero and Raspberry Pi Zero, as well as the very first version of Raspberry Pi Zero, have a very constrained hardware. This was the same reason why we stopped supporting AGL on Raspberry Pi 2. Uh, in general, um, AGL requires quite a lot of resources and uh, as a conclusion of this talk, I would highly recommend you using uh, AGL on Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 uh, or 8 gigabytes of RAM because of the UI. Um, another question, uh, Orlin is asking, uh, Qt and QML has been very common in the automotive industry. Is HTML5 getting popular as well? Do you know any car companies using HTML5 for UI? Uh, I'm not familiar with products uh, integrated uh, in cars on the road. The idea in uh, AGL is to provide a platform on, on top of which uh, manufacturers can change the UI and ship it to the market. Uh, however, uh, you can see some demonstrations by Egalia running HTML5 applications on embedded Linux devices and, and on AGL. Uh, sorry that I cannot provide any details about uh, products available on the market. It's uh, just something that I really don't know. Uh, another question, uh, does AGO support any can, uh, can shields for Raspberry Pi? Uh, yes, Marcelo, uh, can shields are supported. However, I don't remember uh, on top of my head the exact model of a Raspberry Pi hat with can that uh, was uh, supported, uh, is supported by AGO. However, um, this year, during the demonstrations at CES and FOSDEM, uh, AGO had a demo uh, with Raspberry Pi uh, had exactly for this. Uh, please, uh, let's continue this conversation in Slack and I'll try to find pointers and provide you more details about it. I believe um, uh, Jan Simon from Linux Foundation can also provide details on this. Thank you very much for uh, your commands. Uh, here is another question uh, that's important to ask uh, to answer. How can open source beginners start contributing to AGL? Um, you can follow the instructions um, and the uh, links shared in my slides. And my slides are already available at chat. After the conference, I'm going to share them also in SlideShare and LinkedIn. Uh, so the easiest way is um, first to uh, join our community, the mailing lists, the uh, the weekly uh, developer calls on Tuesday, the RC channel to have a look at the documentation and the wiki to, to get started. And hopefully this, uh, this presentation will encourage you and more people to join our community and get started. Uh, AGO is a, is a great product, uh, open source uh, uh, product uh, to, uh, for beginners to get started uh, with open source and something that's uh, made for embedded devices, and especially vehicles. Uh, all right, um, Kurt is asking, apart from infotainment telematics, what other anticipated application domains? Uh, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, there are many demonstrations done with AGO. Uh, especially in the, the past years. As you have seen in this presentation, there are a lot of changes going on. There was even a demonstration with, um, uh, with Alexa integrated in AGL. Uh, so again, I would recommend you to have a look at the CES demonstrations with AGL. There are details about them in the AGL wiki. Uh, there's a big question here. Uh, I know it's a big question, but what are the usual challenges with porting AirPy BSP from Wayland Western and Perspective? Um, yeah, that, that's a huge challenge. Uh, it was a huge challenge. Nowadays, it's not such a challenge because of the excellent shape in uh, Meta Raspberry Pi. Fortunately, I don't have enough time to answer in details. However, uh, if, you, if you're basing a, uh, an embedded Linux distribution built with the Yocto project and open embedded, on the Meta uh, Raspberry Pi BSP layer. Uh, nowadays, porting to uh, Wayland is way easier than it used to be. Thank you very much uh, for uh, joining this presentation. It's great to, to see so many commands and uh, questions. Uh, we're running out of time. 
so please let's continue the discussion in Slack. You can find me there in the uh, embedded track uh, as well as in the Yocto project track and the Vihu software track. So uh, it, it's going to be great to continue the discussion over there. Thank you very much for your attention and huge thanks to the whole team of Linux Foundation for organizing this virtual event. I hope you've enjoyed. See you.